20.9D055110CM8801 will show the defendant has appeared on video for this initial hearing. Sir, did you hear and understand the advisal of rights and penalties? I did. Have you received a copy of your charges? I have. Have you read the charges? I have. Do you understand them? I kind of understand them. Do you have any questions about your charges? I might be able to help you understand them fully. Well, I've wondered how mine aren't, like, constitutionally protected free speech. Well, I'm, I'm not sure that I can answer that question. Uh, that may go to a defense that you may have with regard to the charges. Um, but uh, I guess uh, more basically my question is, is simply whether or not you understand what it is that the state has alleged that you have done. I understand that it's protected speech, and I don't know why I'm in a jail cell. Well, That's, my, my concern, my, my goal is to end this as fast as possible. And so, like, I guess there's a problem with some liquid chalk. It's like chalk on concrete. And so, like, can I just plead guilty today and, like, you sentence me right now and we figure this, you can hold me as long as you want? Well, sir, we're not equipped to do a guilty plea here today. If you wish to plead guilty, you're, you're certainly uh, within, within your rights to do so. Um, well, but I that's, think it's ridiculous. I, I just want to end this as soon as possible. We're wasting a lot of people's time. Yours. Well, sir, again, if you wish to plead guilty, you may do that. That's not something that we can do here today. This hearing is simply an initial hearing to advise you of your rights, penalties, the charges, and to set further court dates. If you want to schedule a guilty plea hearing uh, that would be for the purpose of you entering a plea of guilty, again, you're welcome to do that, but that's not something that we can do here today. But whether you plead guilty or not, one of the first things that we need to do is just make sure that you understand what it is that you're being charged with. Uh, with I regard don't. to, do you understand what I'm being charged with? Yes, I think I do. Okay, what am I being charged with? Well, the charge that you have been charged with is criminal mischief. It states that on or about September 30th, 2015 that you did without the consent of nobles of the city of Noblesville, recklessly, knowingly, or intentionally damage or deface the property of the city of Noblesville. Specifically, sir, it is alleging that you wrote graffiti and or phrases on or around the Noblesville Police Department building. That is what the state has alleged. That is what they would have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt before you could be found guilty of that charge. With regard to any of the specifics of that or as you say, liquid chalk or anything like that, uh, that that may be going to the merits of the case or may go to any defense that you may have. But uh, again, right now, what I'm what I'm concerned with is just making sure that you understand what the basic allegation is against you. Well, I believe these are a lie. They're, it says intentionally damage and deface. Those are impossible with chalk. I don't know how they can prove intent like my mindset, and then damage and defacement are impossible. So I, I should just be let go. Again, sir, what you may be talking about is, is the merits of the case or defenses that you may be entitled to raise. These are the allegations that have been set forth. This is what they would have to prove before you could be found guilty. Right, right. But, I mean, there, this is like these people that are making these allegations are the same people that, like, work for everybody in that courtroom. And so, like... It's, it's not really going to achieve justice. You know, we're not, they're not seeking any justice here. They're not seeking a reimbursement of money or to make a victim whole. The city of Noblesville isn't a person that I smashed their mailbox and I can pay them and buy them a new one. You know, to see the problems here, there's going to be no justice or uh, there's going to be a charade where a prosecutor and a judge with a jury that they pick choose a bunch of words like defacement and public property and then lock me in a cage. So I'm going to skip all that, save the taxpayers some money, and you could just tell me right now how long I – like what judge do I have to speak to? What prosecutor can end this for me today? Why can't we just say guilty? It says six months, so you want to give me six months? We'll sit here for six months. When does that happen? Or when does somebody actually wake up and realize that liquid chalk doesn't damage property and that I'm – First Amendment rights to protest the government, and that's what I was doing in Let Me Go. Where, where are we at? Again, sir, you're asking questions that go towards the merits of the case or defenses that you may have. That's not what we're here to do today. 
well, can I ask you to lock up James Baldwin or Roger Kabula? Because they're involved in this case and they're making lies. So if I have to sit in a cage while I wait to defend myself, how about they do too? At this point, sir, you've, you've not really asked me anything that I can answer with regard to helping you understand the charges. So uh, I'm going to take it that you understand them sufficiently uh, at this process. So the address, name, date of birth that appear on the charges, is all of that correct? It is. Do you have a phone number? I do. What is that phone number, please? Whatever the jail phone number is here. That's where I'm staying now. Well, my question to you, sir, is whether you have a personal phone number that the court can use to get in contact with you if the court needs to get in contact with you. I'll be at the Hamilton County Jail. Very well. Do you need for me to read the charges to you here in open court? I mean, I'm still confused about reckless, intentional, damage, defacing. It's children's truck, sir. You do understand that children's truck doesn't damage or deface property, right? Do you need I'm for curious me to... how I get charged for this. That's, that's a valid question, I believe. Sir, are you... it is a valid question, sir, but I cannot answer why you have been charged here today. That's not a question that I can answer. I don't, I don't know what we're doing today then. Like, when do I get to decide whether or not I can go home? Again, sir, the purpose of today's hearing is to advise you of your rights, the possible penalties, the charges that you are facing, and to set future court dates to resolve this case at another time. Why? Well, I, I don't think it's that complicated. Why can't we solve it today? I don't know that it's that complicated either. That's why we're here. I've told you. Well, if it's not that complicated, then which way is it? It's either complicated enough to, like, lock me in a cage for a long time or not complicated enough, or it's not complicated enough to let me go. Sir, quite honestly, I don't know what you're asking because you're asking simultaneously for me to accept a guilty plea for you and sentence you to the maximum term and also to recognize that the charge should be dismissed. So no, no, no. I I'm, asking you you which, which do you, I'm asking you which you believe. You should do either or. If you believe that what I did was a crime – and that the city of Noblesville will be much better off with me in your facility for six months than go for it. Otherwise, let me go. Sir, that's not for me to decide. For me, well, the job who is does to decide it. That would be for, for the judge at your trial or a jury if you elect to have a jury trial. That's all a, a facade. It's fake. Like, there is no justice there. Not sure I can help you then, sir. Okay. Do you need for me to read the charges to you? Sure. Very well. Omitting the formal parts of the charging information, you are charged in count one with criminal mischief found at Indiana Code 3543-12A. It is a Class B misdemeanor and states that on or about September 30th, 2015, Adam M. Mueller did, without the consent of City of Noblesville, recklessly, knowingly, or intentionally damage or deface the property of City of Noblesville, to wit, wrote graffiti and or phrases on and around the Noblesville Police Department building. Sir, do you intend on hiring an attorney to represent you in this case? I don't intend to do anything. Are you asking the court to appoint an attorney to represent you? I'm only asking you guys to let me go or tell these people how long you'll hold me. Are you intending on representing yourself in this matter? 100%. Sir, I may let you do that, but I need to make sure that you understand what you are doing when you represent yourself. First of all, do you understand that you do have a right to be represented by an attorney at all stages of these proceedings, including trial and appeal, or if you simply wish to plead guilty? Okay. Do you understand that? Do I understand what? Do you understand, your do you understand that you have a right to be represented by an attorney at all stages of these proceedings? I understand that you say that. Okay. Do you understand that if you cannot afford to hire an attorney, that one will be appointed for you at no cost to you. I also understand that you say that. Do you understand that if you choose to represent yourself in this matter, that you will be held to the same standards of representation as an attorney would be held if an attorney were representing you, particularly with regard to the rules of evidence and rules of procedure? In other words, the same rules that apply to attorneys in court would also apply to you. Do you understand that? understand that you say that, but I don't think anybody knows the rules and conditions of that court. They change, like, by the second. 
Do you also understand Nobody that the fully court, understands it. Do you also understand, sir, that you that the court cannot give you legal advice, and so the court cannot assist you with regard to the rules of evidence and rules of procedure if you choose to represent yourself? So the court would let me be wrongfully convicted, you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, with regard to the rules of evidence and rules of procedure, if you don't know what those are, the court is not going to give you legal advice. The court is not going to act as your lawyer and help you with regard to those rules of procedure and rules of evidence. So who does the court help? The court is not to give legal advice or to assist either party with regard to the rules of court. Right, but what is its service purpose then? The court's purpose. It's not to help me and it's not to help them. Sir, I'm not engaging in a dialogue with you. Do you understand what I've what I've told you? Not at all. I don't understand who the court's going to help then. If they're not going to help me and say that this case is right or wrong, then who are they? What are they going to do? With regard help? with regard to legal assistance, the court is not going to help anyone. Okay. That is not the court's purpose. The court helped the the state already by locking me in a cage. So that should be thrown out because the court just violated that per permission. You guys helped the state, right? Somebody named Roger Kubula, K-U-B-A, signed a warrant for my arrest. Thanks to the DA who's prosecuting me, they seem to have helped them. Sir, I'm going to simply advise you that if you wish to be represented by an attorney, you have the right to hire an attorney. If you wish not to be represented by an attorney but wish to represent yourself, you have that right, but you bear the risks of that self-representation. If you wish to be represented by an attorney but you cannot afford to hire one on your own, I would urge you to fill out and return to the court an affidavit of indigency. That form is available there at the jail or at the court office, and by doing so, the court will review that, and if you are deemed to be indigent, an attorney would be appointed for you. Sir, your bail in this case has been set in the amount of $2,000 cash with surety. That is $205 to a bondsman. You do have some court dates coming up. Your omnibus date and pretrial conference has been set for December the 8th, 2015 at 9 o'clock in the morning. Your bench trial has been set for January the 14th, 2016 at 1.30 in the afternoon. Again, if you wish to enter a plea of guilty, you'll need to schedule that guilty plea hearing with the court. I would urge you to communicate with the court in writing and request a guilty plea hearing and one will be set as quickly as possible. Do you have any questions? No. I'll yeah, show that a not guilty plea is entered on your behalf. That will be all for today. Thank you.